Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and I'm going to start off this episode by saying sorry, sorry if the noise that you hear and if I'm really dark because of all the lights, um, we're having a couple of troubles with it all and obviously with how hot it is in the UK at the moment I have to have that aircon on otherwise I am going to die from the heat but we hope you are enjoying it and uh, we hope you're surviving if you have hay fever like I do. It is pretty rough sometimes. But to the watches, which is what you're obviously all here for, we have a very interesting and diverse uh, drop this week, which I pretty much say every single week, um, and that's because that is what we try and focus on here at Kibble Watches. We don't care about getting in the next just hype pieces. We want to give you a variety, and that's from a couple of hundred pounds all the way to multiple thousand pounds. And when you're spending that kind of money with us, we hope it's still super interesting. And the piece we have on the table that is in that realm, I think is very, very interesting. It's going to surprise a lot of you guys and girls. Um, but we do have a range from little micro brands and all the ones in between as well with some vintage. So uh, we're going to get into it. And as always, I want to say a big thank you to every single person out there. Every single week, you guys and girls are keeping me incredibly busy and I am so thankful for it. So keep sending in your watches uh, that you have for sale. Keep sending in your emails to purchase just keep doing what you're doing i really appreciate it and as always if you do have a watch you want to sell kibblewatches.co.uk the top of the website there's a sell button super simple process and we can get your watch sold we'll either buy it directly from you uh, we'll point you in the right direction if it's not for us or we will consign it and sell it on your behalf very simple and before we dive into the watches on the table because i seem to forget almost every episode what is on wrist i am wearing a watch that's going to be coming soon to the website maybe a week or two from when you're watching this um, but something that's available as of the day of recording this video and it is a very very nice 1995 circa 1995 around that amiga speedmaster mark 40 mk40 as it's often referred to a really interesting triple date um, just a really nice design very cool dial and obviously a lot of you will know hadinki did a re-edition of this uh, this is the original prior to that re-edition so the one to have in my opinion i quite like the new one but this is this is the og um, really nice size you know the bracelet it only fits unfortunately six and a three quarter inch wrist so my exact wrist size um, it does come with its service pouch and also its service card to show when it was last serviced as well running absolutely perfect mint condition really really good and just a gorgeous piece for the money in my opinion hell of a lot of watch but that is not what you're here for today you're here to see what is on the table and we're gonna have to start with that incredible IWC engineer. Starting this week's episode with a forgotten gem, I guess you'd call it, by Gerald Genta. So for some of you who maybe don't know so much just yet, maybe you're in the early stages, uh, Gerald Genta was a, or, or yeah, definitely was a famous designer who invented the design for the Royal Oak by AP, the Patek Nautilus, uh, Amiga Constellation, the original Pipandal. Uh, Universal Geneve Pole Router, he has had some incredible hits and obviously the most notable of those ones just mentioned were the Patek Nautilus and the AP Royal Oak. Now, he also invented this watch, the IWC Engineer, which is why it has this very iconic integrated bracelet design, you know, the, the bezel with the screws. Um, it's just a very iconic design, which he is very, very famous for. And, you know, rightfully so. I think it's a great design. But this is one of his originals, and it unfortunately doesn't have the same amount of coverage that the rest seem to have. Is that changing? I think so. I think more and more people are coming to realize this is a very, very special watch from a very special designer. Um, so I do suspect these are going to continue climbing in price as they have. Um, probably never to the same amount that you see the AP and the Patek going for, but I do think these are going to go up uh, considerably because there is a hell of a lot of watch for the money. So this is a 1990s IWC Engineer chronometer. The specific reference to this one is the IW3521-001 and interestingly inside this case, let's get this bracelet open, inside this case, behind that case back, is actually a very thin automatic JLC calibre 889 to help it give that chronometer status that you see right there. You've got the date over there at three o'clock and you've got the luminous hands and indices which are actually in gold tone, a screw down crown over a three and just a really, really gorgeous design. As you can see, the, uh, the bracelet folds closed with um, a folding clasp right there just to go over it which is IWC signed, if I can get that in focus. There you go, really well made, really well engineered and just really well designed, which you'd expect from 
one IWC and obviously Gerald Genta. So a really gorgeous watch. But let's have a look at it on wrist and talk dimensions because this is where this watch may surprise them. And here we are on my six and a three quarter inch wrist. It is sized to my wrist with one spare link. So unfortunately, if you have a bigger wrist than that, you're going to struggle with the, the size of this watch because it is the integrated bracelet and finding links is very tough. But if you have a six and a three quarter inch wrist and below, you're going to be more than fine with this watch, which is probably a good thing because the case size of this one is a little small at 34 mil by 39.5 mil look to look. But thanks to the design, it does wear a lot bigger and it just looks really, really great on the wrist. It's only 9.5 mil thick, thanks to that JLC caliber and 23.5 mil lugs from the top of the lugs and a heavy taper down to the clasp, as you can see, which just really goes with the design of the watch. A stunning watch for the money and I think for what we're asking it is incredibly fair especially if it will fit your wrist so go check this one out on the website now and see the photos and the description. From there let's bring it up to this brand new unworn red bar edition by Frederic Constant. Next up we have a watch that was limited to 100 watches altogether and this one as you can see is brand new unworn with its full box and paperwork its original strap still in there also unworn and this is the Frederic Constant um, or Constant however you want to say it uh, High Life Automatic Red Bar Limited Edition. So for those of you who know uh, there was a Red Bar global events that unfortunately couldn't happen uh, because of covid but they still did a virtual one and they did a lot of different things watches all kinds of stuff and this was one of them that they did a limited edition run with frederick constant for red bars you can see on the case back right there um, and limited to a hundred pieces this is a really really great design integrated bracelet um, which is why it comes with the spare strap as well so you've got a choice between the bracelet and the strap um, and just a really really well designed good looking watch and i think it's really great that you know red bar and brands are being able to work together and come up with these kind of designs now inside here is the automatic caliber frederick constant 303 and this specific watch is from september 2020 but let's put it on wrist have a closer look and talk dimensions and here we are on wrist as you can see it is 40.5 mil case by 45 mil lug to lug so it sits nice on the wrist only 11 mil thick and 25 mil lugs now that's obviously from the case here that leads to the strap with a nice taper as i said it is an integrated design it does come with that spare strap so if you're not a fan of the bracelet and you'd rather wear it on the strap you've got that option as well so go check this one out on the website see the photos the macros especially of that dial and you'll be amazed by how much watch you're getting for the money. Sticking to the sort of mainstream brands of the independents, I guess you'd call them. Let's have a look at the Zinn. Next up, we have a really interesting offering from a German brand that just seems to be getting more and more attention as of late, and rightfully so. Uh, this is the Zinn model EZ, uh, EZM3. Uh, and as you can see, it has the crown over there on the left-hand side, so reverse side, which makes it very comfortable when you're actually wearing it on your left wrist because the crown isn't sort of protruding and digging into your wrists especially if you have that problem that's what this solves also very convenient for divers which is obviously what this is designed for as well really interesting design very nice with that matte black dial you've got that bezel which has a loom up there in 12 and you can see you've got the dates over there at sort of 330 ish thereabouts um, nice bead blasted case as well with this matte finish it just looks really good and a signed screw down crown as I said over there at 9 o'clock you can still see it's still got a sticker on the back it's original leather strap and it's original buckle um, so a really really nice design now inside here beating away is actually the automatic Salita SW200 and the specific watch is from December 2018 and it does come with its full box and paperwork as you'd probably expect considering it still has a sticker on the back but a hell of a lot of watch for the money. But let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions and show where that crown really plays in. I'll actually take this watch off to put it on the left wrist as it would probably be worn by most. And here we are on wrist. So a really, really well proportioned watch, especially with the crown over there on the left hand side, as we said. Uh, it is 41 mil by 47.5 mil look to look. So under that 50 mil look to look tip that wears really well. 12.5 mil thick and 20 mil look. So endless options there, especially in this hotter weather. I think a, uh, a rubber strap would be a lot better, which we have got a few black rubber straps. So be quick, send us an email if you want to buy this and we can throw in a rubber strap for you as well. 
uh, just say you saw it on the video and we'll get that sorted. But a really great watch for the money. Now let's take a look at what is probably one of the most bang for buck watches on the table, if you can call it that, the Damasco. Next up, a, another interesting brand that I think offer a ton of watch for the money and a lot of people still haven't clocked onto them yet and this is Damasco. So this is the DS30 black and green as you can see. They did this model in a few different variants with different coloured second hands and date but the green I think is one of the nicest. You know, it's a nice colour green, it goes well with the black dial and obviously the big sword hands and that whole entire look and again that all matte case which just looks really great it's stainless steel it's not titanium although it does look like titanium you can see you've got the case back there this is the original strap and original buckle um, but just a really really good design and inside here is actually a ETA 2824-2 so a good ETA movement not the Solita not that there's anything wrong with the Solita it's just if you can have the ETA it's nicer to have um, and the loom on this dial is fantastic as well definitely want to keep an eye out for screw down crown which is signed as you can see over there at three o'clock and you've got push holes in the case to change the strap makes it a hell of a lot easier and i wish more brands would do this because to be honest to me it doesn't ruin the design at all it just adds a good amount of convenience but that's all that pretty much said and done uh, it's from june 2020 as well with his box and paperwork which is basically a little zip cushion um, and just a little card as well. But let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions because that is where this watch really shines. And here we go on wrist, a really, really well proportioned watch at 39 mil by 47.5 mil, pretty much very similar to a couple of watches we've looked at already. Only 10 mil thick thanks to that ETA, um, which keeps it nice and thin and low to the wrist and 18 mil lugs, uh, sorry, 20 mil lugs, ignore me. So 20 mil lugs, a very well proportioned watch and again loads of options for straps on this and with that green I would even get a bit funky I think a green strap would look great on this or a black leather with green stitching that would look really great but once go check out and as I said for the price you're way under a thousand pounds for this watch um, which is a hell of a lot of watch for the money. Now, if you know me, you know I love compressor style watches and compressor cases. So this Nodus, I absolutely love. Let's have a closer look at it. Now, as I said, I do love a compressor case and a compressor watch, and this one is no exception. A really gorgeous design, and actually the first Nodus we've had in stock. Um, I've seen them on Instagram, I've seen them in person on people's wrists, out and about, um, and they've always been very well received by collectors, and you can see why, especially once you get it in hand. It's a very well-built watch for the money and that's always the key here with these kind of independents there for the smaller micro brands as they're called they've got to really get that price to sort of quality ratio perfect to be received well in the community otherwise instagram will just shit all over you to be honest uh, <laughs> which a lot of people do with a lot of different brands and thankfully notice have got that sort of uh, balance very very well done so this is the notice duality uh, chasm I, I don't know how to say that black uh, 12 hour travel bezel as you can see on the inside which just goes really well they do a 12 hour and a 24 hour um, at two different variants you've got the date down there at six but a very nice looking watch inside here automatic miyota caliber 9015 so not the eight series the eight series is the one that you do get that noticeable uh, rotor spin so the 9000 series is that more upgraded hacking you know just a better movement all round from miyota and you can see on the case back you have a nice closed case back which again i appreciate because the movement isn't particularly that nice to look at um, and you know they've done a very nicely designed case back this one is from october 2020 and it does come with its full box and paperwork all spare links and it's pretty much unworn both screw down crown crowns with loom in them uh, which is just a nice little touch again that they're doing and a very well machined bracelet as you can see with all of that extension on the clasp and I wish more brands would do this because then you can get the perfect fit on your wrist especially with summer in full heat here in the UK but let's show it on wrist and here we are on wrist and that crystal really plays nicely in the light and just really adds to this watch you get a lot of reflections but they don't sort of make the watch illegible which is very good you've got 40 mil by 48 mil look to look all these watches have come in under that 50 mil sweet spot that I always go on about so it's nice to see um, only 13 mil thick which for a Miyota is very very reasonable and with the whole design it works really well and 20 mil lug so again endless strap options and again 
drilled lug holes right there to make strap changing a breeze. Thank you, Noda. Small brands take note. But go check this one out on the website and get yourself an absolute bargain. And now let's go to the Baltics. We'll actually try and take a look at both of them together. We'll see how that goes because they are both pretty much the similar watch, just slight differences um, and both really cool. And next up we have two Baltics, another brand that has really taken the collecting community by storm and produced some fantastic watches. Uh, which a lot of collectors I know have and go on about and actually buy um, regularly. And these two are both the Baltic Aquascaf. You can see we've got two different versions. We've got the steel bezel on a ju uh, not Jubilee, a beads of rice bracelet over there. And you can see we've got a brand new unworn one here with the black bezel on a rubber strap. And let's quickly take a look at this one on the right first. You can see it's still got a sticker on the front. Um, still got a uh, sticker on the, the buckle as well, Baltic rubber tropic strap, which really works with the design. No date on the dial, which is nice to see, and just a really, really well done, well executed design, especially for the money. Uh, nice texture to the dial as well. So this one is uh, housing the Automatic Miyota Calibre 9039, which is actually in the both of them. And this one is from June 2010 with its full box and papers. And this one over here, also has the same caliber and is from June 2019 so a year older with its box and papers as well but isn't unworn you can see it's definitely uh, been worn and loved but it's still in very very good condition uh, both signed crowns as well which is nice to see and the beads of rice bracelet is a very nice touch you can see Baltic over there uh, and again loads of options on extending the clasp so you can get your perfect fit on wrist which is really good. Now dimensions wise they're both exactly the same at 39mm case by 47mm lug to lug, 12.5mm thick and 20mm lugs. So let's try the one on the bracelet on and give you a sense for size. I won't try this one on because as I said it is on one. I believe there's a wrist shot on the website so you can check that out. And here we are on wrist. So as I said I've already gone through the di dimensions. You can see it wears super well on the wrist and I really like this piece of rice bracelet which is available to purchase directly from Baltic I believe so if you go for this one and you'd rather have the beta rice bracelet i believe you can still get it from them um, and it just looks really really good and it's a lot of watch for the money i think these are both under 500 pounds so again you know hell of a lot of watch for not an awful lot of money so check them out now that leaves us with the vintage on the table and let's start with the really slim and elegant universal geneve now on to some affordable vintage and this universal geneve is really cute and looks really really great especially on wrist which we'll show it on in a second but as you can see gold plated with a steel back um, and a very very simple flat white dial with a printed logo printed roman numerals and very thin black uh, hands as well which just look really really great very simple elegant design and one that looks good on this black strap we paired it on but would look great on brown and many other options as well so this universal geneve is from the 1970s and it is a reference 3092 765 and inside is a manually wound universal geneve b42 which is a nice thin very simple uh, and very good movement one you don't have to worry about too much and you can see it's even got its original gold plated side crown there, if I can get that in focus, there you go. Um, so it's nice to still have that. Oftentimes these get swapped out from you know wear over the years, which is very common because they are just gold plated over, over sort of brass usually. But let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. So here we go, definitely on the smaller size, and that's going to put a lot of people off. But to be honest, I think smaller watches are coming back, especially in this vintage dress style, because they were never intended to be big watches in the first place, and I think it still looks really good on wrist. But it is 31mm by 38mm lug to lug, only 7mm thick, so super thin, and 16mm lugs. So again, very easy to get different straps that will fit it nicely. But I think this combination works really well with the black on the dial and the black on the hands. So go check it out. And now on to three Juveniors, and let's start with a really gorgeous double signed Brigade dial version. One of my favourites from the drop, and this is a really stunning Juvenia Turler signed, as you can see down there. So double signed, as we call it, or retailer signed. Turler was a retailer retailer so they would have signed this prior to selling uh, and put it in their windows it was like a prestigious thing for retailers who were were considered that high up that you could get a watch from them and it's say it on the dial most commonly seen are sort of tiffany or most sort of prestigious are, are tiffany dial rolexes for example and patex and they're the ones obviously people look out for but it's nice to see it on a smaller brand that isn't a fortune and this one really stunning steel case with those black brigade style numerals and those really elegant leaf hands which again are black um, just goes 
goes really well on this flat black strap we've got it paired on. You can see a nice crown over there and a nice simple case back, nothing too elaborate and nothing too crazy. Just a really well designed watch, especially for the period. So this is a 1970s, um, 1960s, sorry, sorry, uh, Jovenia Turl assigned. Um, and beating away inside this is a manually round uh, Raw Villaretti, I can never pronounce that brand at all, probably absolutely butchered it, uh, Calibre 423, so slightly better uh, finish movements, they were they were more famous for doing that rather than ETA back in the day, they would, they would give a lot more attention to that and that's why some brands chose to use them. But a really cool looking watch from the 1970s, uh, 60s, as I said, I keep saying 70s. But let's have a look on wrist and see what the dimensions are. And here we go, another 33mm case size by 39mm lug to lug, only 7mm thick and 18mm lugs. Well proportioned and well sized and a great looking watch. Now onto a super classic 9 carat gold Juvenia which offers a huge amount of value for the money even with its box. Next up another gold watch but this time a solid 9 carat gold Juvenia. A really really elegant and simple watch that just works really really well as you can see we've got it paired on this flat brown strap but it does look great on a black strap as well and can become very dressy and give you sort of that perfect tuxedo watch if you will. You can see you've got plain case backs so and no engraving on this one. We've put it on a generic gold plated buckle which works really well and you can see this is a quick release strap really well done really well designed straight lugs as well which help with the size which we'll get onto in a little bit but this one is from circa 1960 to be sort of precise bang on 1960 based on the hallmarks and inside is a manually wound Javenia caliber 604 a very good uh, movement but let's show on wrist and talk dimensions and here we are on wrist so slightly bigger than the universal geneve at 33.5 mil case by 40 mil lug to lug and it's helped with those really straight lugs which just give a nice profile on the wrist only 8 mil thick and 18 mil lug so again it wears a bit bigger thanks to the 2 mil bigger strap uh, which just gives that bigger profile overall but i think this combination really works it does come with its original Juvenia box as well which is a nice little touch so go check this one out a hell of a lot of watch for the money and last but certainly not least the stainless steel Juvenia with its original buckle and swing tag and finally this super simple super elegant Juvenia manually wound steel watch as you can see very nice design, it's got its original Juvenia buckle which doesn't seem to be focusing, there we go. And you can see we've even got its original swing tag which we've thrown in there as well. But a really well designed, nice looking case shape as well and this one is also from the 1960s. And inside here is a manually wound PESA 7001, which for those of you who know your modern ETA equivalents, it's an ETA 7001 uh, basically inside. And as I said, circa 1960s. Hell of a lot of watch for the money, we've got it paired on this nice strap, but let's show it on wrist and talk size, and also signed crown as well. And here we go on wrist, another 33mm case, it seems very very common and popular. 39mm uh, lug to lug, only 6mm thick, so the thinnest watch we've seen today, and 16mm lug, so again a smaller lug size, but it wears super nicely on the wrist, and a very simple, clean, elegant watch with a swing tag and a buckle, which is nice to see. So go check this one out on the website. So there you have it guys and girls, that is this week's drop. Again, as always, a very varied and sort of all over the place drop, which is what we like here at Kibble Watches. We don't focus on one thing or one brand or one era. We like to cover the whole range and uh, we hope you guys like it as well because at the end of the day, we, we realize collectors don't usually just collect one brand and stick to one era. They collect that huge range. So why not have a dealer who can offer that same thing? So you have to go to one place rather than 20 different places to get your watches. So with all that said and done, I do hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I do hope you're keeping well out there. The uh, fully opening up of the lockdown here in the UK has been delayed, which I think we all saw coming a million miles away. So hopefully by the time it comes around, we'll all be more and extra prepared for it. Um, so keep safe in the meantime, keep well. Don't forget to keep sending in your watches for sale and we will keep helping you where we can. But thank you very much and we'll see you all next time. Take care.